In this lecture, we are going to learn about functions, which is very important building block of any programming language. Generally, a function is block of code that performs a specific task, which makes it reusable and can be used multiple times. So when you have a certain number of instructions which are needed to be used based on certain conditions or we require to use it for some number of repetitions, then we can use functions. To explain use of functions, we can write a function for adding two numbers and whenever in our program or module we want to add two numbers, we can call that function directly now obviously addition is something that can be achieved easily by using addition operator so using functions for such small operation doesn't make any sense but consider a case wherein you're required to perform some complex operations on those two numbers for example calculating mean and standard deviation in the same function for a given set of data points so for this example you can write a function and use it whenever you want to calculate standard deviation Another advantage of function is that it makes your program easier to understand because you have broken down your programs into multiple set of codes. There are two types of functions. One is standard library functions that we have already used like printf, scanf and git ch. And the other type is user defined functions which user defines in their code. So let us check how user defined functions can be used. Consider this block of code. This block is your function definition that is where you define your function so usual syntax is a written data type then your function name and parenthesis starting curly braces and ending curly braces denotes start and end of your function inside of curly braces you have instruction to be executed then in continuation you have your main function inside of main function you can write your regular instructions then you can call your defined function like this for calling a function you just need to write function name and parenthesis after that you just need to add semicolon in the next lecture we will take an example of user defined function we will also check how parameters can be passed to a function Let us check again the syntax for defining a function, but this time we are adding parameters to it as well. So this is your function name and this is your return type. So return type is basically any data type. So your function will perform some operation over here and the same data type will be returned by this function. So a data type can be void, int, float, but when you define integer as a return data type for your function, then your function should return integer type of value only. Now to add parameters to your functions, you just need to specify data type and variable. You can add any number of parameters to your function. For example, I can specify, let's say float variable A, then I can take any other data type, let's say int B. So you can have any data type and any number of variables for your functions. Now let us take a few examples to understand this concept better. In example one, I have defined function as add to which I'm passing two integers and it will return me an integer. This is how we should define a function. Now inside of this function, I am performing my operations. I am I'm adding two past values a and b and storing its addition into new variable c. So in this statement, I am declaring a variable c and I'm initializing addition of a and b into c. And in the next statement i am returning c now notice that c is a type of integer which we have declared over here so this value will be returned by this function whenever it is called let us take one more example in example 2 i am defining one more function to which i am passing a single variable as float and it will return me float type of variable notice that i am not declaring any additional variable in this function but we are returning calculated value in line to the return statement so written is the keyword which tells compiler that this value will be written by my function. So what is happening over here? 3.142 is a float variable. Radius is a float variable. Again, the radius is float variable. So, so multiplying these three will give me a float variable only, which will be written by our function. Let us take one more note over here. When a function is called, we can either pass constants to it or we can pass variables to it. So once the function performs the operations, the value is assigned depending on its data type. So in this case, I'm calling add function and a result returned by add function will be stored into X 
which is integer now this data type of your variable x should be same as return type of your function if there is a mismatch then compiler will give an error in the next lecture we will check few programs on functions that will make your understanding for the functions more clear Now that we have seen theory related to functions and we have also seen what are parameterized functions, let us check few programs on how parameterized functions are executed. So I'm taking an example of a program wherein we are expected to take two numbers from user and print addition, subtraction, multiplication and division using functions. So for each operation, we are required to write a separate function. So in the program, we have these header files. Then this is my first function i am naming it as add it is going to return me integer and it is accepting two integer numbers as input parameters so inside of this function i am just using return keyword and i am returning x plus y so whenever this function is called and we have passed two numbers to it it will add those numbers and return us an integer value similarly i have defined second function naming it as sub again it is taking two input variables of type integer and after performing subtraction option it is going to return me an integer so instead of this return statement i have written x minus y similarly we have functions for multiplication and division naming it mul mul and division div respectively they are performing multiplication and division so once we have defined all these functions that we required for our program i have written our main function in which two integers are declared then i'm asking user to enter two numbers which are getting stored into a and b and after that i am simply printing addition subtraction multiplication division and i am calling functions in line like this so when i'm calling add a comma b controller will jump from this statement it will go here to execute add function so suppose user has entered let's say 10 and 20 so a copy of 10 and 20 will be passed over here when i say a copy so compiler is declaring additional set of integers so what is happening over here is x is equal to a and y is equal to b so a and b are local functions of main function and x and y are local function of add function so operations will be performed on x and y notice that a and b will not be accessible in add function similarly program will print subtraction so i'm calling sub function over here then in the third line calling mul function and finally div function so that is how we have declared and defined these four functions and called those functions from our main function in the next lecture we'll check few more programs on functions but in those programs we will check how we can achieve the result using call by reference method In the next program, we are going to take a number from user and then we are going to print factorial of that number. Then we'll also check whether the number is prime or not. And we'll also print Fibonacci series till the label equal to user's given number. So programs for factorial checking prime and Fibonacci series we have already seen in detail. So in this program, I'm not going to explain logic of solving Fibonacci prime or finding factorial. However, we will concentrate our learning on functions. So to perform factorial to check number is prime or not and Fibonacci Fibonacci, I have written functions which can be utilized whenever we require like this. So all these three functions are taking a single input parameter and they are performing their individual operations. Like here, this function will find factorial and it is just simply printing factorial is fact. So in this operation, it is using the value of X, which will be passed from your function main. Similarly, in the second function is prime. The same parameter will be used to find whether the number is prime or not. And if it is prime, this will be printed that it is a prime number. Else, if somewhere this condition holds false, so it will print that number is not prime and controller will return from this point. So instead of using exit, I have used return over here because if we exit program immediately here, then subsequent lines from main program will also be skipped. Those won't get executed. So once we write return, then from this line when main has called it, once each prime returns 0, this statement is considered as executed and controller will move on to this line. But in case if we have written exit over here instead of written 0, then this line will not get executed at all because your program will terminate here and here only. So similarly in the third call, this function will be called and it is going to perform these statements to print Fibonacci series. So in the main program, again just to explain it, I am accepting a number from user, string it at n and these are our three functions 
functions which we have declared and defined already so we are just calling them passing the value of n so value of n will be stored into x and operations on x will be performed on each of the functions If you have clearly understood concept of passing parameters by value and also previous two programs then this next program is a piece of cake for you because in this program we are just going to ask user to enter a number and using functions it is going to print square and cube of that number so obviously we will require two functions one that will be calculating square and another will be calculating cube so we are passing that single number to it and the first function which is square will be returning x multiplied by x similarly cube which will also take input as an integer and it will return me x multiplied by x multiplied by x so in the main program as we have declared and defined our two functions like this then in the main program i'm just going to ask user to enter the number the value will be stored at variable n and then inside of print statement we are going to call our functions in line so i'm writing square inside of bracket n so n will be passed to square function internally x is equal to n will happen so value of n will get copied into x and operations will be performed on x and square will return me integer value so if user has entered 10 then in this case output will be square colon 100 and in case of next line output would be cube colon 1000 now just as a small tweak i have called cube functions directly over here so in this case cube will be called however compiler will not give error also there would be no changes in our output because this cube is just doing calculations over here it is not printing any values here so this function will be executed but there won't be any difference in terms of output also notice that we are not utilizing the value that function cube will be sending us but that is also okay so whether to use or not use the values written by your function is completely your call so in this in this case, a compiler might give you just a warning, but it's confirmed that this statement will be executed.